Thank you guys for being here. It's such a special day uh, because today is a day where we as a community, we as a city, and we as a sports world get to recognize and honor the legend and the legacy of Coach Lenny Wilkins. Yes, yes. Look, as a leader uh, in the NBA world and a devoted member of the community, I've been fortunate to know Coach and see the ripple effect of his generosity and what it's had on so many lives. Each of us here today is here because in some way Coach has had an impact on our lives. So all of the NBA world, the 1979 championship uh, basketball team is here. Uh, elected officials are here, and all of you, family and friends, thank you for being here. And uh, the monkeys told you guys it's Coach's birthday, so we can't let Coach get out of here without singing a song. I'm sorry, Coach, but I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, too. And uh, we all going to embarrass ourselves because my throat's a little parched and the weather is a little turned outside. So we're going to all give it a try together, and we're going to sing Coach a happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear coach, happy birthday to you. As you see, we're graced by uh, the presence of uh, Mayor Jenny Durkin, Todd Lewinke, and Jamal Crawford, and each of them will say a few words in honor of Coach's uh, monumental occasion. So um, we'll start with you, Mayor. We'll bring you up and uh, say a few words and welcome everyone here. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for being here. I also want to recognize former Mayor Norman B. Rice, who is here. I see my good friend Bruce Harrell in the audience. Bruce, thanks for being here. And you know, since we moved this inside, I'm a little warm, so excuse me just for a second. Because, um, yeah, I'm a neutral mayor. I don't have any favorites. I have to tell you, this is just a great day for me. Um, I grew up in this area, and as a kid, the Sonics were my heroes. But they were the heroes for a city. You know, I grew up in a time where they were named for the supersonic jet. And we were a region that was going to build that supersonic jet. And we believed in the future. And then that contract got canceled, and we lost 50,000 jobs and 70,000 people almost overnight, and neighborhoods emptied out but we still had the team. And those Sonics, as a little girl, I had a Lenny Wilkins poster in my room. And, okay, we were, I could have played professionally with them, but I wasn't really just a kid, no. But I remember, you know, we had eight kids in our family, and we went through a lot of milk. In those days, the milkman would come and bring you the milk. And I read in the newspaper that Carnation Milk had a contest. If you could identify the two Sonic players on the back of the milk carton, you could put your money, you put your entry in and maybe win two tickets. So when the milkman came, it wasn't on every carton. I went through every carton so we could get only cartons. And the two players, Lenny Wilkins and Dick Schneider. And I stuffed the ballot box with all my entries and didn't I win two tickets? And this coach right here, he brought us hope, not just as a player, and was an amazing player, and then came back when the Sonics were on the rails and brought us back. But he's been such a committed member to this community, giving so much through his foundation to Odessa Brown Clinic and to other causes here for Odessa Brown Clinic. And so, Lenny Wilkins wasn't just one of the greatest players ever, a great player coach, great coach, Hall of Famer twice. He's a Hall of Famer for Seattle. He is one of here. Three times Hall of Famer. I'm sorry, coach. 
So we know that when we name this road, it will forever remind us Lenny Wilkins Way. It shows his contribution. We're not, we're not on the rail yet, but it's just a terrific time for City of Seattle to have this kind of hope to remember someone who's given so much and to make sure he's part of every game that's played in that arena, whether it's hockey, storm basketball, or the return of a certain team. So with that, I'm going to give it back to our good friend Jordan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, look, if you guys haven't yet had a chance to check out uh, the a hockey game just yet, uh, Climate Pledge Arena, the facelift in there is just magical, and you probably wouldn't even recognize it. One of the men who were uh, instrumental in bringing an NHL franchise to our Northwest community, uh, the CEO of the Kraken, Todd Lawinki. Well, good afternoon, and we're so proud to be here. We didn't have to walk far, but we're so proud to be here today to commemorate this wonderful person. And when he came here in 1968, our city was never the same. He brought an amazing winning pedigree as a player and a coach. He brought a championship here. 1,300, how many games, Coach? 1,360. Coach, we've won one game and we have self-esteem. My goodness. <laughs> but I believe the most important thing he brought to town was his heart. Back in the 1970s, before it was sort of in style for players to start foundations, he became one of the first players to say, I'm going to give back and I'm going to do it in a structured way. And he started the Lenny Wilkins Foundation all the way back in the 70s. And that was his way to give back, and he has never stopped giving. And he has given millions of dollars to this community. But more than that, he's given millions of people hope. His work at the Odessa Brown Clinic is just remarkable. We should all hope that other people like Lenny follow his way, because the world will be a better place. So we're here to celebrate him today, but I'm here to tell you, we're going to celebrate him tonight in front of 17,000 fans in that arena next door. Um, one of the most beloved people in our community because he came here and he dreamt. And I'll just share with you one more dream I have. That is that people will walk down Lenny Wilkins Way and walk right into a Sonics game and honor this man, and I believe that will happen. Thanks, Todd. Um, now, locally, uh, this next speaker, he's known as a Seattle legend, but in the NBA community, he's known as the oldest player to score 50 points in an NBA basketball game. <laughs> he's also the second player to score 10,000 points off the bench. Please welcome Jamal Crawford. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yeah. I pulled up and I saw Wilkins Way. And it was, I've been down that street a million times. I actually used to work when it was Key Arena. I was the, the kid that was bringing up food to the concession stands and the Sonics were playing, Coach Carl and those guys were going. And it was usually like a 10 minute trip. I'd make it a 30 minute trip because I'd bring the food and I would stay in the hallways and just dream, dream about being out there. And when I see Wilkins Way, it's not just Coach. It's his wife, Marilyn, it's his family. You guys should all like, Take that in, because it's not, besides every great man, you can clap for that. A lot of people say behind every great man is a great woman, but it's really, they're side by side. And you don't get this far and accomplish these kind of things without having an unbelievable team. So this is for all you guys as well. Um, I had the opportunity to play for coach when I was with the New York Knicks, and what struck me about him was we actually stayed in the same apartment building. And so I would see him all the time. I'm like, coach, like you could be staying in the penthouse. He's staying in the same apartment building. He was always one of the people. He was always about the people. And obviously, having a Hall of Fame coaching career, having a Hall of Fame playing career, those, that's wonderful things, but what struck me about him was his heart. And my sister taught me a long time ago that you become a bigger version of what you already were once you get a lot of fame or a lot of money. If you were somebody who didn't treat people well, you treated them worse because you had more money to do that. If you treated people really good, then you treat them even better, right, and took care of people. Coaches and his foundation has donated millions of dollars 
for years and years and years, right to our community, asking for nothing in return. And to me, that's a sign of a great man and a great family. That's what I aspire to be more than anything else. And when I see that, that's the part that separates him from everybody else. To me, there's no figure in the city who deserved Wilkins way like Coach did. And so to see that, it's like, wow. And, and Coach is taking it in now, and he smiles about it, but I don't think he understands the impact that will have to my generation and people coming up who see that. Because it's a beautiful thing, and it shows that anything is possible. Coach, I, I, this is, like, amazing, and it's unbelievable, and nobody deserves it more. So without further ado, Coach Lenny Wilkins. I, uh, I wore this jacket just to jog some memories. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, it's truly a pleasure for me to be here, see all of you come out uh, to give support to me and my family. Uh, you know, a lot of people may not remember, but when I came here, I won't say when, but it was a while ago, 68-69 season. I was traded to Seattle, and I came kicking and screaming. And, and the reason was is that I was leaving a playoff team that was in the playoffs every year, and we had an expansion team. And I did not think that we could make the playoffs. But after spending some time here and meeting the people, I decided that there was no better place for us than the Northwest. Seattle was unique. The fans were unique. They were receptive. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. And we decided that this was going to be our home. And of course, you know, when I first came out here, my oldest daughter, uh, she was just a youngster then, and she was learning to ski. And I went up with her to Snoqualmie Pass. And I made the mistake, I put some skis on. And the next thing I know, our general manager was asking me if I read my contract. <laughs> so right away, I realized that I was not going to be able to go anywhere, especially being a part of the Sonics and not being recognized. But this is incredible. And, you know, and I try to tell young people all the time, that their tomorrow's doctors, lawyers, politicians, ath athletes, their tomorrow's future. And they can make a difference. And I want them to know that. I want them to believe that they can make the community as good as they want it to be. But we have to encourage them. We have to let them know that this is possible. And I feel very blessed. Uh, I've been, I was meeting, I was talking with somebody here tonight, and they was telling me that they've been, uh, they were celebrating their anniversary. They've been married 53 years. I won't tell them how long I've been married. But, uh, but certainly, because of my wife, our strong family ties, we're able to accomplish much. And besides my wife, and I have to mention this, but when I first came out here, I met two other women who were very strong in the community. One was a gal by the name of Freddie Mae Gautier and Toby Burton. And they let me know right away that I could make a difference. They took me to was a little model city's house. 
that the Odessa Brown Clinic had a doctor by the name of Blanche Levizio who was tending to young people, helping young people. And I've always learned from the day that I grew up that when we give back to our community, we make it stronger. And I met, met Blanche Levizio. I got to see what they were doing with the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. And I said, that's going to be my charity. Because they were providing health care to families, irregardless of their ability to pay. And as I've always said, a sick kid who goes to school puts their head down on the desk. They don't learn anything. But if we give them the health care that they need, we let them know that they're important to us, then they'll want to strive for more. And so the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic became one of my biggest charities here in Seattle. We've had tremendous support, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, I, uh, I feel so blessed to get Mayor Jenny Durkin to support and create the idea that there could be a Lenny Wilkins way. Uh, made me feel real good about that. I got to know Todd Lywicki over the years, and uh, there's nothing he believes that he can't do. And uh, we're going to help him accomplish that dream because the Kraken are here, Climate Pledge Arena is functioning. Uh, it's going to be a great place for entertainment. And Seattle deserves it. We're a great city, you know? I mean, with the high tech here and everything, uh, hey, listen, it's just unbelievable. And I'm not going to stay and take up all the time. I just want to thank you for coming out. I can't believe that you came with the weather being the way it is. But you know, as they say in Seattle, wait five minutes and it'll change, you know. But seeing there's faces out here in the audience, and I know every one of them. I, I really do. I, I, I'm not going to mention names, but I thank you. Thank you for your support. You make us what we are. And th this is incredible. You know, I, I met Jamal Crawford when he was a young player. And, you know, the thing that I loved about him is that he's not going to be deterred from what he believes he can affect. And when I was a youngster growing up, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And, uh, Back then, uh, everyone thought that if you were from Brooklyn, you either had a zip gun or a switchblade, you know. I had neither, you know. But what I did have was I had a love for athletics. And I got to see and meet one of the Dodger players, a guy named Jackie Robinson. And it was incredible how it affected me because you know, he was one of my first role models other than my mother. I mean, this guy believed that he could achieve anything. And he was intelligent. You know, he was uh, fierce as a competitor. And, and I like to tell the story. I used to go to Ebbets Field all the time because I could get in for 50 cents. But I watched Jackie Robinson steal home plate. It was an incredible feat. And I was very blessed that eventually I got into basketball, got a scholarship, went to Providence College. And basketball has allowed me to travel the world. I've met so many people. I've met so many people who affect your lives. Because what I said to myself, if they can do it, I can do it. And I truly believe that. And, you know, to come to Seattle and build a championship, 
I still think to this day that team doesn't get the credit it deserves, but it was a wonderful time. And some of the players are here. You know, I don't, I, I'm not going to introduce anybody because if I do, I have to introduce the whole audience because I know the whole audience. <laughs> but the thing that I love most of all is that my, I have uh, two, four, four granddaughters in the audience. I have a grandson in the audience. I have family. And most of all, she feels it should be Marilyn Wilkins' way is my wife. <laughs> and I know, you know, a lot of you may be sitting out there, and you might see this ring here, and you think it's the 50 greatest players. Well, I have one of those, but this was what my wife gave me on our 50th anniversary. But that was a few years ago. <laughs> so we're still going strong, but uh, I, I'm not a political animal, but, but I want to say this, is that you and I can make Seattle better. We can be better. We will be better. And thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out. Uh, Thanks to my family, my daughter, my son, my grandson. I, I got a grandson, my two uh, granddaughters sitting there, my daughter Jamie, you know, uh, my daughter Leisha. Uh, everybody's here. So I said Randy. Yeah, that's it. See? But, but she won't let me forget anything. That's okay. But. Uh, just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of something special. Thank you so much. All right, coach, get in the best place they can see you now. All right, the moment we've been waiting for, we're going to unveil what it looks like. Give me a countdown from five. Get your cameras ready. Three, two, one.